Hello and welcome back to our How to Make a T-Shirt Quilt series. I'm Stephanie Stepping from Quilt Ags Anonymous. If you've missed the previous videos, make sure you go check them out. We talk about everything you need to make a T-Shirt quilt, how to cut out your shirts, get them fused to the interfacing so they're not stretchy when you're sewing them to quilting cotton. And at this point, we've made all of our blocks and we have sewn the sashing strips to the left and the top side. So we're ready to assemble our quilt. And what I did for mine is I just put a cell phone camera on my bed as I was laying it out. And I'm going to watch that video and you're going to watch it with me in real time. And that way you can kind of see how I make my decisions. I made quite a few of these and I've got some tips and tricks to share with you guys here today. And also, even though I'm a professional quilter, I've got a very large studio here to work at. I often am still sewing my quilts together at home just because it's a little easier and I don't have a design wall here. So I'm laying mine out on the bed just like you guys are at home. So the very first thing I do is I take all my blocks and I just lay them out and I'm going to separate them by color value and that means light medium and dark and in most cases any color is going to be medium unless it's navy sometimes that can go dark and then your blacks and your charcoals are going to be dark and then your white cream and ash gray is all going to be light. So that is step number one is get everything separated because when we lay everything out, we don't want our eye to all be drawn to one corner of the quilt because you packed all the colorful shirts down there and then you have a bunch of white shirts all on the other corner. That's weird, you wanna spread it out. So step one is just organizing your shirts by that color value. Also, when I talk about shirt color, I'm talking about the color of the actual shirt. Like obviously there was teal on this shirt, but the color is ash gray. So I would consider this one to be a light value shirt. Now I have 16 squares in the quilt that I'm doing. I'm doing the lap size and it worked out really well that I had four light value shirts. So what you're gonna see me do here is just lay them out on the diagonal going from corner to corner. And that way I've spread them out. I've got one of them in each row and none of them are all next to each other. You could mix it up a little more than this too. You wouldn't have to exactly do them on a diagonal. You could spread them out a little bit. But the idea is to get them in different parts of the quilt and not have them all be in one row. All right, next up, I just had two black shirts. So I put one in the bottom corner and one in the top corner that would be balanced and on different sides of the quilt. Now, next up, you're gonna see me do a little subdividing from within my medium value colors. This quilt, for whatever reason, I ended up with a whole lot of blue shirts, like lots and lots, I think there were six. So what I did here is I separated all my blues into one pile and then every other color into another pile. That way, when I'm putting everything out, I'm gonna lay my blues out first so that I can spread those out as much as possible and then just fill in the color later once I make sure that I don't have like all six blues grouped in one section because that's not good. We don't wanna mess with that. All right, so I know I've got six shirts here. So I wanna have at least one blue in each row. And in two rows, I'm gonna have two blues. That way I don't have like three blues in one row. That would be a little too much. We wanna spread it out. So we start with that don't mess with Texas right in the center. And then we've got the Shano shirt up there. That one I was kind of hesitant. That one could have gone dark or could have gone light, but those are actually my darkest two blues. So it kind of creates the light going one way and the dark going one way and kind of crisscrosses those in the final design. So that kind of works really well. And now I have more of my medium scale blues and the brighter blues that are going out. So that one that I just placed, the New Orleans one, that was very medium. And then this Shano Wisconsin one is also very medium. So I kind of got those in opposite ends of the quilt, but still kind of in the middle rows. And now what I wanna do is make sure that I don't have it right next to any of the other blues. So you can see that it's on a diagonal to them, but it's not right next to it. So we have good movement there. And it ended up working out that they're just kinda catty corner to each other. And so they're spread out really nice and evenly there. All right, so now it's time to get some of these shirts out. And I think first what I did was I grabbed my boldest ones. That bright pink is really bold and this red is really bold. So I wanna get that there. I think I ended up moving this shirt. Um, but at first I put it next to the pirate because the pirate had a red hat. And I thought that the red hat and the red shirt would play off of each other really nicely. And then that's a really light pink background in that Washington DC shirt. And at this point I'm realizing I've made 17 blocks. So one's gonna have to be a pillow. And then we've got the green one up there. 
it's going to go in that top corner. So at this point, you kind of want to take a step back and look at everything and decide, do I like this? Is any one corner really like calling to me and saying, I'm getting all my attention drawn here. Maybe I need to move something. And that's what I'm doing. I'm kind of standing off to the side. I'm looking at it. My daughter's coming in and saying how pretty everything is. And I'm looking at it and I'm realizing that that red and that green and that pirate and the dark shirt, it's too much. Your eye is getting drawn there. We need to switch something up and get something lighter in there because there's a lot of really medium value shirts around there. It's just too much. So this way I can kind of have the, the bright red and the bright pink kind of cat a corner to each other and it kind of moves the eye around a little more. And then we have a more lighter value print up in the top corner. It kind of serves as a place for the eye to rest around some of the more darker and medium value shirts around it and some of the busier ones around it too. That the, A lot of those shirts are very busy. They've got a lot going on them. And that Washington DC shirt has a lot of negative space. So that's another thing that you kind of want to look at is not just your color placement. Does it look good? Is your eye getting drawn in any one place? But also, do I have a lot of busy shirts all in one area and a lot of not so busy shirts all in another? Because you kind of want to make sure that you are balancing that so that way you kind of have a busy shirt next to a not so busy shirt. And that way you're not just drawn to one area because there's just too much going on in it and it just doesn't look quite right. At this point, I also like to take a photo and sort of walk away from it for a little bit. And then if I come back and I look at the photo later and I'm like, okay, yes, this is it, then I'm ready to get started and start sewing. All right, so we are gonna take a look at the Illini quilt that I made for my husband. Just as another example of this, we'll try to get some fresh photos of it too so you can see what I'm talking about on a big scale because we can only see so much with our overhead camera. So. The Illini, their school colors are blue, orange, and white. It gets mixed in a lot as a neutral. So that's what I had for t-shirts. I ended up having half of my shirts be orange, so I was really easily able to alternate that. You can see we've got this place one and three in the first row is orange. And when we look at the second row, it's in two and four. And it just keeps alternating like that all the way down. So that would have been what I would place first. And then from there, a quarter of my shirts are blue and a quarter of my shirts were white and gray. Uh, so I just got to alternate. You know, we've got in this place, we've got the blue in the second position. Here it's in the third. And in this row, we have it in the fourth. And then finally, it's in our first position in that bottom corner. And then the whites fit in wherever the blues don't. And so in this one, I don't have like a very set like diagonal like we did with the other one. It's very mixed up. You can kind of see a lot of it. But I want to show you one more thing before we move on from this, and that's the busyness. So if we look at these two shirts, this is something like, you know, you get everything set by color. And then you wanna step back and you wanna look and you wanna say, do I have a bunch of busy shirts all clumped together? Because if you do, then the eye's gonna be drawn there. It's gonna look funny. You're not gonna quite know why. So what you wanna look for once you get your color set is how to mix and match that to where you're gonna have places where the eye can rest in between your busy shirts. So here in this design, we have the design is taking up almost the entire uh, square. So it is a very busy design. There's a lot going on in it. There's a lot of screen printing. So we have it next to this design here where there is much more negative space. We see a lot more of the actual t-shirt around the edges of the screen printing design. So that way when we look at this in the corner, yeah, there's a lot going on here, but because there's less going on here, it works. Here's another example of that. We have this really busy, very highly designed screen printing shirt here. And then next to it, just a simple image that's gonna go across the chest and we got a lot of negative space in it. So if you see something like this, you got a shirt like this that you're considering using and you think, well, maybe this should be a six by 12. Well, if you don't need to like fill out your shirts. Like say you got too many shirts, you got 20 shirts and you're trying to do a lap size quilt. If you don't need to make that as one block in, or two shirts into one block, consider doing this because it is a great way to sort of let you stand back, give the eye a place to rest and it ends up making the final quilt more appealing when you have blocks like this that don't have as much going on 
especially when you put them next to ones like this where there's just a whole lot happening. And this uh, video here is the reason why when we put everything together, we only put sashing on the side, left side, and the top, because then we can lay it out, all that sashing is attached, we're ready to go. And then unless we have our final design figured out, that's when we're gonna add our sashing on all of the blocks that ended up on the right side, as well as the bottom. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. So get everything all lined up, take your photos, and we'll be back in a couple of days with how to attach the sashing to your side and your bottom blocks and how to sew this together. We're almost done. After that, we just have to quilt it and we are good to go and you can gift this or enjoy it for yourself. All right, make sure if you haven't already, you head over to our website and get the pattern for how to make a t-shirt quilt. We have revamped it. It's got lots of really good info in it and it has all the sizing and exactly what you need for the different sizes that we put together. And the videos are gonna be free forever, but if you get your applique pressing sheet and your interfacing for the back of your t-shirts from us, you can get that pattern for free. We also have lots of fabric options to choose for your sashing, any rulers you might need, all those goodies you can get on our website, shop.quiltnaticsanonymous.com. Thanks so much, and until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.